The first thing that strikes me is that in the uh, ancient primitive world, where monotheism hadn't really taken foothold yet, um, human sacrifice wasn't all that unusual, and that this is something that uh, Abraham and Sarah would have been familiar with. Uh, Possibly, and, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing yet. <laughs> not, not that, not that, not that strange a thing. And the the, in, the purpose of this whole story was to distinguish Judaism from from ancient primitive religions that, that allowed sacrifice, and that this was verboten. Um, the other thing <laughs> in inhabiting the characters, if if I were asleep and uh, uh, got word from God to kill my son, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I certainly would not wake up my wife and tell her. Uh, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. Yeah. I won't tell your wife that, not that I know your wife. But okay. no, I think that's an act of mercy. <laughs> right. Well, remember, Abraham is a man who argues with God. Here, he doesn't. So that's also a great no that's of great note. Uh, but he's not shy. And I don't know that, how shall I put it? Our relationship with God is obviously vastly different than Abraham's was. Abraham is, the, is we are told, uh, is the individual, only human being who, discover, quote, discovers God. Uh, but I think that the kind of intimate relationship of arguing, of pushing and pulling, of interchange, is a very Jewish one. Um, uh, not to denigrate any other faith, but we are hopefully obedient to God, but we hopefully engage him. I think that's a very Jewish way. And I think it is, uh, and, and I think Abraham is the first person to, to, to start us out on that course. Uh, he doesn't in this particular case, and there are Midrashic reasons as to why. I don't really like them so much, but uh, let, me, let me just get back to what you said. Um, I would say that when I first encountered the binding of Isaac, uh, the thing that was out in the air was that this was a polemic against uh, child sacrifice. Good. Very, very shortly, and in fact, I'd almost say immediately, I rejected that. And it's very simple. If that's what it's about, that's history. We're done with that. I, it might be a footnote in this sacred document, but why would I, and as I learned more about Judaism, why would I continue to obsess about the end of child sacrifice since large portions of Jewish history, child sacrifice is not on the agenda anywhere. So it doesn't, it never washed with me. It really just simply never did. In fact, um, it sounds like a way to really avoid dealing with the horror of it. Uh, the real horror of it is the fact that a God asks it of Abraham. The real horror is the horror of a God that, and this is the only conclusion I've gotten over the last, uh, over, the, over 40 years, is that God is unknowable. And that I believe deeply that there is a God. I believe deeply he is in charge of the world. I also understand deeply that I cannot know him and that he can be absolutely terrifying. I have to live with that. It scares the hell out of me, but I have to live with it. I don't believe that Akedis Yitzhak and the fact that we obsess over it, and it's really not an ex a, a, a too strong a term, but we do with it vis-a-vis -vis Rosh Hashanah. I mean, come on. I mean, this is like an obsession with it. I mean, with, you know, show for the whole thing. Akedis Yitzhak is at the core of our religion. It's not about the end of child sacrifice, because then... We're done with it. It's just, it's, and then it's just history, and I don't need it anymore. And it, and it certainly doesn't lead me to believe in anything other than how smart the Jews were. So that's my 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 reaction to that. 